What's going on everybody? This is KC Supreme with Internet Money. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on EQ and advanced EQ techniques and a few tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, I'm in FL Studio 12. I'm going to be using the Fruity EQ2, but these uh, you know, these techniques apply to pretty much any EQ that you have uh, as long as they're a visual EQ, like a parametric EQ. So um, I got a little beat here that I've started. I'll play it for you. So nothing is really mixed, nothing is EQ'd. Um, most of these drum samples are from me and Nick Mira's new drum kits. Uh, so you can check those out on waysupply.net. Uh, this is his diesel drum kit and this is my Ziploc drum kit. That's where these sounds are from. But anyways, I have everything loaded into a mixer channel um, right here. So I'm just going to kind of go through each kind of instrument and show you how to EQ it, uh, how I would EQ it. And then I also have a sample pulled up right here that I'm going to EQ for you and show you how to deal with some weird frequencies that can happen in samples. So I'm going to start with this piano. I'm going to let it play. And I'm going to open up a Fruity EQ2. And because I'm in FL Studio 12, um, I can expand that to be large. So I'm going to play that right now. So you can kind of see here, uh, most of the frequencies are lying right here. You can see them glowing, lighting up. Also, make sure you have high quality enabled. Um, so the first thing I usually do with, this, with a piano is I uh, cut out some of the low end. I'm going to have an 808 in this beat. Um, in most of your beats, you're going to have a bass. So you don't really need all the low end of the piano. Um, so what I usually do is I go to this, uh, this section right here, this band and I pull these little squares down until there's four squares and that basically changes the cut of the EQ so for example if you move this around it changes the severity of the curve so for bass I like to pull it all the way down so it's more sharp of a cut um, now I'm just gonna play the piano And I'm going to pull this in until you hear a change. Um, if you hear the sound change and it loses a lot of its quality, um, that's where we're going to stop and we're going to pull it back until you can't tell that the change is there anymore. So we're going to cut just enough that it takes out the frequencies, but it doesn't affect the clarity and you know the, the tone of the piano. So once again, I'm going to do that again and you'll watch me pull it back. So I hear it about right there. So I'm going to cut out all that offending bass frequencies so the 808 and the bass has room to cut through right here. Now, in FL Studio, the Fruity EQ2 is not the most powerful EQ, meaning when you cut something, it doesn't really cut it that strong. So a technique I like to do is maybe take the second band, and I'm going to pull that down just like this. And I'm actually going to change that to be the same type of curve as this one. And I'm going to pull it down just the same. And then I'm just going to pull that back like that. So now, um, let me do it with and without. Basically, that's just like EQing it twice. Um, because if I EQ it once, it's not really strong enough to take out all the frequencies. Um, now you'll notice I'll have a little um, kind of a bell shape sticking up right here that's okay it's kind of boosting the top frequency but if we want to get rid of that let's see do something like that and now we're not really adding any frequencies but um, we might want to add frequencies so now I'm just gonna kinda take this fourth band I'm gonna narrow it by scrolling down with the scroll wheel on your mouse and I'm going to kind of narrow it a little bit and I'm going to play the piano and I'm going to look for something that can be boosted a little bit. And 
and I kind of like that uh, mid area. So I'm going to scroll the wheel back up. And I'm going to boost in that area just to give the piano a little more clarity. Um, and then sometimes we can cut out some of the highs. I don't know if we're going to need to do that, but we can try. So I'm just going to pull this down so it's the four squares. Maybe a shape like that. Give it a little more boost up in the higher end and the treble and the, the high mids. So now just to compare, I'm going to uh, take off the EQ and put it back on. So this is the raw piano. So it's subtle, but you can tell it cleaned up a bunch of the frequencies, so it's going to sit a little bit better in the mix. Let's move on to the next instrument. Got a hi-hat. So with hi-hats, what I usually do is I'm going to cut out all the lows. Even though you can't really hear lows, there's still some activity kind of happening up here in this area we don't really need. So I'm just going to cut it down. Once again, I'm just listening for the change in the sound and then I want to pull it back. Somewhere like that. I'm going to do the same with the highs. Then I'm just going to boost it a little bit right here where the frequencies are. That's pretty much all I do for hi-hats. Let's do the next hi-hat. So we take this one off. like that same technique let's move on to the snare so once again we're going to cut some of the lows out we don't need them in a snare and then we're going to take some of the highs out Just enough, once again, so it doesn't change the sound. And then I like to boost some of the low mids. Like right here. And then boost some of the highs. Just helps it cut through the mix a little easier. Let's move on to the next snare. Snare and clap, that is. So, so far it sounds like this. Let's go through and keep working. Um, I'm going to do this little accent snare.
Then we got a kick. So we're still going to want to cut out some of the very, very lows. And so we hear the kick kind of lose that punch and that thump. is about right there then we're going to pull it back we're just going to boost right about here 50 hertz and then we're going to cut the lows out or the excuse me the highs out to about right there And now we're going to do the 808. This is a very distorted 808. Um, I'll show you what I usually do. Yes, we want to cut the lows even on the 808. We want to take out some of the muddiness at the very, very low end. Once again, we're going to boost right about here. It's really quick. Um, I had a few notes that were overlapping accidentally, so I fixed that. So now we're going to take some of the high end out. And because this 808 is so distorted, it's going to have a lot of high end activity. So we don't want to take it all out. Um, we don't want to do this. We want to leave some of that high end in so it cuts through like iPhone speakers and stuff like that. And for that same reason, I'm going to boost the mids a little bit. All right, so now our mix is going to sound like this. So I'm going to take off all the effects real quick. Oops. So you can hear it before. Um, once again, it's kind of subtle, and that's how EQ should be. You don't want to drastically take out any of the highs and lows so that the sounds lose their quality, quality and their individual like uh, uniqueness to them so you want to make sure it's uh, subtle but it cuts out all the offending frequencies and it just basically cleans it up and it makes it all sit together a lot better um, now the next example I'm going to show you is a sample and if you listen to this sample I'll play it right now Let's see. You can hear it has that crackling from like a vinyl uh, record or something like that. And uh, this is an example. I'm going to show you how you want to take stuff like that out. Um, let's say you didn't want that effect in the sample. The high end, obviously. And so we're going to do the same thing we did with other instruments. We're just going to cut it very sharply. but we don't want to do it so so far that it takes out the actual sample that we want to keep.
Do the same thing with the low end. So obviously it's still there and that's that's a reason I would open a second EQ and I would do the same thing again um, because you'll hear that it'll cut it out even more the second time. So obviously it's still there, but I cleaned it up a lot. Compare this. Um, so in samples, you know, you want to cut out the low end, obviously, because you're going to use your own bass. Um, I mean, maybe you want to keep the bass in. That's kind of a style choice. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I would EQ that. So that's the basics of EQ um, in FL Studio. Like I said, you can change these shapes right here to get different kind of cuts. Um, so you can use that to your advantage. Usually what I do is just stick to the shape it's already at and I move these dots like I said to change the severity of the cut. So yeah, that's been uh, an EQing lesson in FL Studio. I hope you guys took something from it. You know, I hear a lot of people who either don't cut enough and they got a bunch of muddy low end or, you know, they cut too much when they EQ and it actually makes their beats sound kind of flat and it makes it so the quality and uniqueness of each sound isn't present in the mix. Um, you know, when you're removing bass from piano you don't want to remove it all completely you like I said you want to use that technique where I pull it in and then I pull it back so it retains the sound of the piano um, that'll make your mixes sound a ton better and I hope you guys like this technique I hope you guys like this video you know leave a like leave a comment let me know what other videos you want me to do and I'll get them done for you ASAP so I appreciate you all and I'll see you on the next video